everybody, welcome to Simple Hobby Homesteading. I am Jenna and I'm on the homestead. And today we are gonna chat about chickens. <laughs> And you're gonna see different animals come into the video, in and out of the video. Um, one of our great Pyrenees is hanging around here. Of course, we have cats on the farm. We have goats and pot-bellied pigs and chickens and rabbits and guinea pigs and guineas and turkeys and ducks and just so many animals on the farm. But today, we're gonna chat about chickens. <laughs> so, um, I hear that you guys are incubating some eggs and I'm so excited. <laughs> excited because that means are you excited too what do you think because that means you're gonna have some chicks soon I'm gonna tell you you can hear the chickens in the background I'm gonna tell you uh, how many days it's gonna take hello do you need to tell me a secret what temperature you need to keep them at the humidity oh we're just gonna go over all that stuff I'm excited so first of all let's just get down to the basics you have chickens. Now you have girl chickens and you have boy chickens. This is a girl. <laughs> this is a girl chicken, and she she's called a hen, right? What is a what, what is a boy chicken called? A rooster. Good job. They're called roosters. And you can hear her. She makes some different noises because she's a little bit scared right now. There's a bunch of cats just kind of running around here. And she's like, why are you holding me? Normally, chickens, they don't mind being held. But normally, they like to just kind of range around and pick at bugs and find food and do all that kind of stuff. They're usually not a big fan of being held. So that's why she's a little vocal today. So the parts of a chicken. You have boy chickens and you have girl chickens. And of course, they look a little different because they have different jobs on the farm. So girl chickens, hens, their job on the farm is to lay eggs and to be meat for the farmer or for other folks. Now, uh, a chicken lays an egg about every day, but when that chick is hatched out, when that hen or that girl chick, when they're little, they're called a pullet, when they're first hatched out, of the egg, they are hatched out with all the eggs they will ever lay already in their body. So a little itty bitty chick that hatches out of that egg, it has all the eggs it will ever lay in its whole lifetime already inside its body. And what happens is when it becomes about 16 weeks old, sometimes 20 weeks old, a couple months old, every day one of those itty bitty eggs because when they're inside the chick and inside the chicken they're very little very very little just even, you can't even see them with your eye because well they're in the chicken they the eggs inside the chicken are super super small and what happens is every day one of those eggs starts to make its way down and it goes down 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 the chicken and as it goes down inside the chicken it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it's the size of let's see here a regular egg and then it comes out of the chicken so then the next day another one and so usually every day a chicken lays an egg for the first couple years of its life now as that one egg comes out another one is already halfway through the track at that point so they just kind of keep going on that cycle so when a chicken gets very old it will usually stop laying eggs because it has run out of eggs. It doesn't have any more eggs to lay because it used up all the eggs it had. And so that's what happens when a chicken gets old and that's when a lot of times farmers will butcher the chickens. There's also another kind of chicken called a meat chicken, uh, um, a Cornish rock mix or a Cornish rock pure one. Um, and those are called meat chickens and those are what most of your chicken nuggets and chicken breasts in the store, that's what those are made out of, those kind of chickens, not usually these egg layers. The ones on our homestead are all egg layers and we do butcher once in a while, but a lot of times we just let them live out their old age. So the hens or the girl chickens, they're the ones that lay the eggs. And that's why we have them on our homestead because we love those eggs. Now the boy chickens, and I'll show you one of those in a moment, those roosters, their job on the farm is to protect their hens and to protect the whole flock. When something is scary flying overhead or there's something that gets into their enclosure or gets around their area, that rooster will start, he'll start crowing and he'll start making a fuss. And that's when all the ladies, all the hens know to run and hide inside the hen house. So he warms them. He also finds good little patches of food for the hens. So you'll see a rooster scratch around and when he finds some worms or some good stuff to eat, you'll hear him make noises and all the hens will come running to the rooster because he's found good food for his hens. So that's another good reason to have a rooster. 
Another reason, and this is why we have roosters on our farm, is so we can fertilize the eggs. So what happens is, when the chicken has the eggs inside her, the rooster fertilizes those eggs by mounting the chicken, and then when those eggs come out, they are what's called fertile, which means they can turn into a chick if all the things are right. So we'll talk about what things are right in order for them to get chicks. Um, so that's why the eggs in the store, like when you go to the grocery store and you see the eggs in the refrigerator part of the grocery store, you can't hatch those out even if you had an incubator. Because number one, those hens that lay those eggs, they weren't around any roosters. The places where the hens lay the eggs for the grocery stores, there's no roosters. There's only hens, only girl chickens, because they don't need roosters. They just need the eggs for you to eat. They don't need to be hatching out any eggs. So there's no roosters where those eggs are laid. So they can't be fertile eggs. So you cannot hatch out eggs from the grocery store, even if you put them in the incubator, because they're not fertile. They weren't around a rooster. The other reason is because they're in the refrigerator. If an egg gets too cold, then a chick will never develop, even if it was a fertile egg. So even if a rooster was around and the egg was fertile, if it gets too cold, that embryo inside the egg will die and it won't be able to grow into a chick. So that's the other reason why grocery store eggs can't be put in an incubator, because they're too cold. They've been kept in a refrigerator. So. <laughs> A hen, let's talk about some of the, the characteristics of a hen. Of course, a hen has, just like all chickens, or most chickens, it has a comb, which is this little thing on top. Can you see her comb? Right there on top. Some chickens have big, tall ones, and some have what we call pea, <laughs> what we call pea combs, which are a little bit chunkier and, and shorter. And other ones have uh, double combs. There's all different kinds of combs. And the purpose of those combs is really just for decoration, just to make the chicken look pretty. And I'll show you on a rooster how those combs are much bigger usually. The other part of a chicken, of course, is their eyes. They have two eyes, just like we do, and they have really good eyesight, especially to see things that move. They can see little bugs that move, and they can see grasses that sway, and they can pick out those bugs and grasses so well and go after them and eat them. So, so good. They have a beak. You can see that beak, and that's how they pick things up and eat it. Um, they also, that's also sometimes how hens fight at each other. They'll use their beaks to fight sometimes um, if they want to assert dominance because you have the, the top hen in the hen house and then all the way down to the bottom hen who's kind of like the low dog on the totem pole. And so they have what's called a pecking order and you can you see they use their beaks to peck sometimes. Another thing is these waddles, these hangy down things on the side. Yes, that's a good, oh, thank you for giving a good picture there. These hangy down things on the side. And once again, those are just for decoration. And you'll see on a rooster that those are much bigger too. Another thing that chickens have is they have ears. Did you know that chickens have ears? And there's something really neat about their ears. So let me see if I can hold her still. On the side, right here, you can kind of see it on the camera. She doesn't want to hold still very well. On the side of each of their head, on the side of their head, they have ears, an ear on each side, just like we do. And if their ears are red on the side there, you can kind of see it. If their ears are red, then the chicken will usually lay brown eggs. And if their ears are either white or yellow, then the chicken will usually lay white eggs. And then we have chickens that lay blue eggs and pink eggs and green eggs. And those, usually those ears are either yellow or red. They can be one or the other. Um, but yeah, so chickens can lay all different colored eggs, which is really neat. Now, what egg is the healthiest? What color egg is the healthiest? A lot of people think that those brown eggs are the healthiest because those are the farm eggs. Those are the ones with the chickens on the farms. But... <laughs> It just so happened, if you're eating brown eggs from a farm, that that farmer just so happened to have a lot of red-eared chickens. And so he didn't have yellow or white-eared chickens because the red-eared ones are the ones that lay the brown eggs. So it doesn't necessarily mean that one is healthier than the other. It just matters on what the chicken eats. So if you have a yellow-eared chicken that eats bugs, and grasses and all sorts of yummy good things. And you have a red-eared chicken that of course lays brown eggs and they just eat um, just corn, nothing but corn, all corn. Not, not a bunch of good things, but just corn. 
then that yellow eared chicken with the white eggs, those eggs are gonna be healthier because that chicken ate the bugs and the grasses and all the wonderful different things that are good for a chicken. Whereas the one that ate all the corn, those eggs aren't gonna be very healthy and they're not gonna taste very good. So it all depends on what the chicken eats and that's what determines how healthy or how yummy the eggs are. So if a chicken eats a really good diverse diet, then those eggs are gonna be nice and healthy and super, super yummy. Yummy. They taste a lot better when the chicken gets to eat a bunch of different things. All right, so that's a hen. So what happens, let's kind of go through the life cycle of a chicken. What happens is the chicken lays an egg, right? And if that egg was fertile, if a rooster was around and he fertilized that egg, then it has the potential to be a chick. So what happens is a chicken will usually lay about 10 eggs before they go what's called broody. So what happens a lot of times on farms though, is a lot of chickens have a favorite nest box. So like 10 or 15 chickens will use one nest box. So that's 10 or 15 eggs in one day because they all lay in that same nest box. So as soon as there's about 10 eggs, then a chicken kind of gets that sense that, oh, time to hatch out the eggs because there's enough in a nest to hatch out. Once they get about 10 eggs in that nest, it doesn't matter if it's from the same chicken, it could be all a bunch of different chickens, one of the chickens will decide, I'm gonna go broody and I'm gonna hatch out those eggs into chicks. And if you have a rooster in the mix, then it's probably likely that a lot of those eggs are fertile. So what a chicken will do is she'll hunker down and she'll sit on those eggs and she will sit on those eggs for 21 days or until they start hatching out. Um, and she will get up just once every, usually it's about every four or five days, she'll get up and get a little drink and a little something to eat and then she hops right back on the nest. So they don't get off that nest very often at all. And God made chickens amazing to know the perfect temperature and the perfect humidity on that nest for an egg to hatch. So the temperature needs to be, in order for an egg to hatch, a fertile egg to hatch, the temperature needs to be right around 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 27.5 degrees Celsius. Um, and so that's what allows a chick to start developing and grow and then eventually hatch out is 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. And the humidity, how much moisture is in that air of that nest, needs to be between 50 and 55% humidity. The last three days of hatching, it goes up to about 65, I can hear that rooster crowing, about 65 to 75%. But for the first, usually about 18 days of hatching, um, you need it between 50 and 55%. Now, a chicken knows all that. She knows exactly how humid it needs to be. She knows the exact temperature it needs to be. And if it gets too warm on that nest, if she can feel it getting too warm, she stands up and she kind of fluffs out her feathers a little bit, and then she sits back down to bring down the temperature of that nest. If it's winter and it's super cold out and she notices that the temperature of that nest of the eggs is getting a little bit cool, then she hunkers down and they've got some amazing feathers underneath their wings and on their bottoms, on the bottoms of their breast area. She hunkers down even more and makes it warmer in that nest which is just incredible that she knows to do that. Now the humidity, if it gets too humid, if it's the middle of summer and it's super humid outside already, and she's sitting on this nest and making it nice and warm and it gets too humid, once again, she'll flap her wings a little bit or she'll stand up a little bit and just get some airflow going to lower that humidity. And if it's in the middle of winter and it's super cold and there's not much humidity in the air, then she will once again hunker down and keep that humidity really well. In the winter, usually there's only about a 30 to 50% hatch rate. There's less chicks that hatch in the winter because it's harder to keep that humidity high enough for a chicken. They know they have to do it, but it's just almost, it's, it's just so hard, almost impossible for them to keep the humidity high enough to get a full 10 eggs hatched out. Now in our incubator, cause we don't, we're not chickens. We don't know the exact temperature and the exact uh, humidity that it needs to be just by feeling the eggs. We use what's called a thermometer and a hygrometer. This tells us the temperature of the air in the incubator, which will be about the temperature of the eggs, as well as the humidity level. And these are 10, $15 at your local store. 
work. And so that's wonderful that we use that in our incubator so that we know exactly the humidity and exactly the temperature that we need. Now, if it fluctuates just a degree or two for just a little bit, that's not a big deal. Because think about it, when the chicken gets up, go off to eat or drink, the temperature is going to change a little bit for that nest too. So God knows that, yeah, once in a while we're going to get a little bit of a temperature change and that's not that big a deal as long as it doesn't stay for long. And you'll notice when a chicken gets off her nest to go eat or drink, she doesn't stay off that nest very long. And sometimes, I've seen it here on the farm, where one chicken will get off the nest and go eat and drink, and another chicken hops on the nest and, and hangs out on the nest for her while she's off eating and drinking, which is so funny. Sometimes they lay another egg in there, which just messes up the whole hatching project <laughs> because that egg is laid in later. Oh, it's just a mess. But it happens often on the farm. But a lot of times that chicken will get back from eating and drinking and she'll kick that other chicken off the nest and say, give me my nest back and she'll hop back up on the nest. So that's really nice. So she lays those 10 eggs, about 10 eggs, 12 eggs. I've seen a nest before with 20 eggs in it and a chicken hatched all of them out. It was amazing. So she lays those eggs. And she stays on that nest. And inside that egg, inside that fertilized egg, what happens is the chick starts to grow. And what it does is it eats, you know, the yolk, that yellow part of the egg? It actually consumes that or absorbs that. And that's what feeds it. That's the nutrient of the, the chick that it's, while it's growing in the egg is that yolk. So that's why when the chicken hatches, there's no more yolk because the chick has absorbed that yolk. The yolk doesn't become the chick. That's not the, that's not the embryo. The yolk is not the embryo. That's what the chick consumes while it's growing in the egg. So like I said, eggs come in all different colors and sizes. So we've got a white egg here and a brown egg here. Let's talk about the brown egg just because that's usually the one we associate with farmers, right? So let's just talk about the brown egg. So an egg, when the chickens lay an egg, an egg is actually quite what's called porous, which means air can get into the egg and carbon dioxide can get out of the egg. So a chick that is growing in the egg can actually breathe through the egg because there's tiny little holes. And if you look real close, if you guys look at the eggs in your incubator, real close, you can see these tiny little holes and all those tiny little holes allow air to get in and allow carbon dioxide to get out, which is so neat. And that's why you really don't wanna wash your eggs because number one, that pushes all the bacteria that are on the outside in and number two, on the outside of the egg, there's a, what's called a bloom. And that bloom allows a protective layer. It's breathable, the air can still get in and the carbon dioxide can still get out, but it allows for um, the egg to be protected so bacteria doesn't get in. And so it keeps it fresher longer without having to be refrigerated. And so because these are going in the incubator and not the refrigerator, we need them to stay good for a long time so they don't spoil so that chick can grow in there, right? So we need that bloom to stay intact on the outside of the egg. Now you can't see the bloom, it's invisible, but it's there and it protects that egg so it doesn't spoil while the chick is growing in there and bacteria doesn't get in there and all that icky stuff. So if you ever see a little bit of dirt or something on the outside of an egg, you can just use a little bit of sandpaper to get it off and that works well or it's usually fine if it's just a little bit of dirt. Um, so that's okay. So this egg, the chick is growing in that egg and over 21 days, the chick grows and grows and grows and grows and it's all curled up inside that egg just perfectly. And usually right around day 21, the chick uses its beak. It's got a sharp little beak, it's got an egg tooth. It's like a little bump on its beak when it's first born, when it's first hatched out. And it uses that egg tooth to get a little chip in the shell, it's called pipping and then it spreads its body and actually cracks the egg almost exactly in half. And then the chicken comes out and it just kind of flops there and just kind of lays there because that was a lot of work and the chick is exhausted. And so the chick just kind of lays there for a little bit and that's completely normal. And you'll see when the chick first hatches out, it's wet and it's not fluffy and it's not cute and it's kind of gross looking, but that's completely normal. And if the chick just lays there for a bit, that's completely normal too, because that chick is so tired from hatching out that it just needs to rest. So the air in the incubator or the air under the mom, if it's under the mom, 
will dry that chick out and then it'll fluff out. And then it gets the fluff little chicken that you're used to. Now chicks, when they're first hatched out, they can go three days without eating or drinking. And they do that, God made them that way, so that all their brothers and sisters get a chance to hatch out. Because the, the mommy chicken or the hen wants to stand that nest until everybody hatches out because she wants to make sure to keep that temperature high enough and she wants to make sure to keep that humidity right so that all the other eggs that are gonna hatch actually do hatch. So those chicks that hatch first, they can last for three days without food and water. At about the third day, mom will usually, mom or the hen, <laughs> we'll call her the hen, will usually hop off the nest and encourage her chicks to hop out of the nest as well, and then she'll go find food and water for everybody. So even if some of those chicks haven't hatched, the mom usually will get off the nest at about three days because she knows those babies need food, those ones, those first ones that hatched. She knows they need food. So she'll hop off that nest even if all the eggs haven't hatched. And usually what's going to hatch when the mom is there is what has hatched. And so usually no more hatch out after that. Sometimes they do. Um, if it's a nice summer day, sometimes and it stays warm enough, they do. But then they kind of catch up to the mom and find the mom and it's all good. Um, but yeah, so that works out well. So a chicken, you can see, once again, let's go back to their body a little bit. They've got some great feet for gripping and for digging. <laughs> Hold on, I want to show them your feet. So they've got these big, long toenails and these grippy kind of dinosaur-like feet. And they use those feet to grip onto branches to roost. So let me see if she'll roost on here. Let's see if you'll roost. Can you grip onto that and show them how you roost? See how she kind of grabs onto that tree branch? See that? Isn't that kind of neat? She's not grabbing right on very well, but yeah, see how that claw wraps around and the toe wraps around that branch? They roost up on a tree. Oh, you're fine. They roost, they roost up on tree branches at night or in the hen house, we've got a roost for them to sleep on. So they sleep on those branches in the hen house and then they just poop all night because that's what chickens do at night is they just poop, <laughs> just sitting there on their branch. Um, but yes, so they've got beautiful legs, they've got beautiful feather, these wings are amazing. Look at that, and these wings keep those chicks warm. You'll see uh, when, the, when the hen walks around with her little baby chicks, they all kind of come and they run under their mom and they go under her wings, and sometimes she'll just plop down and that's how she keeps them warm at night. And she'll do that until they are quite big. It's kind of funny when they get really big and they're still trying to nestle under mom. It's kind of funny. But you guys will have your chicks hatch out in the incubator and then you'll keep them in the incubator for about a day. Because remember, they can last three days without food and water. So you want to keep them in the incubator until they get nice and fluffy so they don't catch a cold being out in the cold air all wet. So you keep them in the incubator for about a day. And then when they're fluffy, you move them into the brooder where they have a nice warm spot um, and they have food and they have water and then they just grow up. They grow up into chickens and they grow up into hens, into roosters, which is so cool. So a young hen is called a pullet. That's the name of a young hen, like a kid chicken that's a girl. Now a kid chicken that's a boy is called a cockerel. So you have a pullet and a cockerel. Those are like the kids of the chicken world. Do you know what goat kids are called? Kids. Yep, baby goats are called kids. Um, but yeah, so you have boys and girls of the, the small young chickens. So they're called pullets and cockerels, but they're all called chicks. Kind of like you're all called kids, all of them are called chicks. But some of you are boys, some of you are girls, some are cockerels, and some are pullets. So that's the fun part about that. So I'm gonna go get a rooster now, and we're gonna show you some of the differences in the rooster. I'm excited. All right, so we have Fluffy joining us today. <laughs> she's, I guess, I guess she's guarding the eggs. <laughs> so here we have a rooster. And this was the young man that you heard crowing in the background earlier in the video. And he is a young rooster. He is less than a year old. And as you can see, he is not huge. He's kind of small because he's still a young rooster. But some of the differences you can tell with a rooster is look at that tail. And he's going to grow to an even longer tail, which will be really, really neat. But they grow these big, beautiful tails. And the purpose of those big, beautiful tails are to impress the ladies. So that's good. Now this guy, you'll see his comb is quite a bit taller, and I'm going to get it kind of close so you can see it. His comb is quite a bit taller than that hen's comb was, and it's tipped black. He got a little bit of frostbite. He got a little bit cold, and so his comb, it'll, 
<laughs> it'll probably be fine in the summer and the spring. It might stay a little bit discolored, but some of that'll grow back, so that'll be good. And his wattles, now usually roosters have big, huge wattles, but because he's a young rooster, his wattles aren't as big. <laughs> and now you can see, even roosters have ears. So he has red ears, but he's not gonna lay any brown eggs, is he? Because he's a rooster and he doesn't lay eggs. His job is to fertilize the eggs. Now another difference with a rooster too, is they have, <laughs> I know, I want to show them your feet, so hold on a second. They have what are called spurs. So you see they have, kind of have an extra toenail. It's this thing right here and it's called a spur. You can kind of see that. Yes, let's get a side. Yep, right there. You can see his, his spur right there. And they use that spur for fighting other male roosters. So when they get kind of uppity or when they're trying to figure out their pecking order for roosters, then they will use those spurs to get at each other. And you have to kind of watch out with roosters because sometimes they'll use those on people if they're not a friendly rooster. But all of ours are friendly, so that's good. And I like about this guy, he's got, he's got hair by his ears. You can kind of see that hair and it's just hilarious. I always call him his mutton chops. He's got some goofy mutton chops by his ears. Um, but those roosters, they'll fight. And so you gotta kind of watch that and make sure they don't hurt each other because we don't want them to hurt each other. And so if we have more than one rooster that are fighting, then we'll, so we'll separate them and make sure that they have their own flock of girls and that they don't have to fight. But a lot of times they'll settle it out just fine. We have, right now we have seven roosters in with our hens um, and they all get along perfectly fine. They all know their status in the, in the flock and so they don't have to worry about fighting anymore uh, but they got into it a little bit at first but then they kind of settled down and they figured out who was going to be the big head honcho um, and all of our users are roosters are quite young as well they're all about this age so and roosters usually are much prettier than hens it's not fair in the chicken world it's not fair and actually in the bird world in general <laughs> most of the males hold on big boy most of the males are actually much prettier in coloring than the females and that is just because the males want to attract mates same thing with chickens the prettier a rooster is usually the more hens that'll flock to him to get their eggs fertilized by him so so those roosters want to be super handsome. And to be super handsome, you need a nice big comb, big waddles, and a nice tail. <laughs> So roosters are really cool. I love the roosters on our farm. So you guys, I think that's it. I think we covered chickens. It has been the best chicken chat ever. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments below or have your teacher email me or um, have your moms or dads email me or message me or get me on Facebook or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think we've chatted chickens. What do you think? I had a blast. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. And remember, do what you can with what you have wherever you are. And have a blast. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.